On today's show, we're going lobster fishing. So, ready to make a difference? Building a better planet starts with you. everyone at home and welcome to another great episode of Aqua Kids. I'm Katie and I'm Drew. Today we're headed to Maine to take part in their famous lobster industry. That's right Drew. From catching our own lobster to learning how to cook and eat them, we have a fun and busy day ahead of us. We sure do Katie. Let's get started. All right. We're here in Jonesboro, Maine where lobstering starts at a young age. Yeah Drew, lobster fishing is a commercial business and an important pastime here in Maine. Well, Katie and Selena are down there right now, so let's go see what they're doing. Let's go check it out. Hey guys, I'm here with Connor and Cameron, who recently began lobster fishing. But I know that before you get your license, you have to pass a lot of rules and regulations uh, and the whole to-do. So tell us, how did you get into this business? Uh, well, my grandfather has been doing this for a really long time, and we've just kind of grew up with, grown up with it. Mm -hmm. What do you have to do to get your license? Um, you're going to have to get on the internet and you just look up Maine lobster fisher fishing license mm -hmm. and um, you are kind of have to fill out this big thing to um, get your license like how many tags you want and what's your boat name and who's your sponsor going to be because you're oh, going to wow. have to have an older guy that was a lobster fisherman fisherman or is a lobster fisherman to sponsor you mm -hmm. and you're going to have to get your boat registered and stuff like that. And before you get your license, is there a certain amount of hours that you have to complete fishing before you can actually obtain the license? Um, well, if you want to go commercial, you're going to have to have, I think it is uh, 1,000 gear hours and 2,000 fishing hours. Wow, that's yeah. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so then when I turn 17, I can have, I think, I believe 300 traps oh, by wow. myself. And then I can go, and it will just keep, the trap number it will keep going up each year. Oh, wow. as I do it. And does a commercial license mean you will be able to sell it to lobster pounds and other places like that? Um, we already can sell it to lobster pounds. Oh really? As it is, yeah. But we can go commercial. Like I I can only have 150 traps right now. Oh. And he can only have, I believe 50. it's 50. Hmm. But when I turn 17, I can have 300. And when he turns 17, he can have 300. Neat. So we That's could have cool. 600 between the two of us. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. It's quite a bit. So this is a career that you can both go into and hopefully have for the future. Yeah, instead of standing around talking about it, let's go do it. <laughs> All right, let's so go. Let's go. <laughs> wow, that was bad. <laughs> socket and then if it goes down over this it's not a keeper is that too small no this is going to be a keeper okay so this is what's going to be on your dinner table oh nice so. and how do you make sure you don't get pinched you're going to cross you're going to take it out and you're going to cross basically you're going to cross the claws okay so now it won't can't get you oh so you're going to be good and how do you put the bands on i will show you that This is going to be what you have put the bands on with. So you're going to take that, you're going to squeeze, put it on, and twist. Oh, look at that. You want to try? Uh, sure. Okay. <laughs> so, let's see. Squeeze. Put it on. Put it on. Twist. Twist. Cool. There you go. 
go. Oh, I did it! <laughs> I always thought they came with the vans on already. I didn't know you put it on. No, that's not how they come. <laughs> My <bad>. Nice track. <laughs> I know, it's smart. Okay, so the next step is you're gonna put it in the crate. Oh, you have a bunch already. Yeah, we have, we have quite a bit already. Okay, Katie, so when we get a lobster, we think it's a good spot, so we're just gonna set it right back where it was. Okay. And you just throw it back in? Yep, we're just gonna push it right off the table. And then you're just gonna feed your rope out so it doesn't get caught up in the motor. Well, thank you, Connor and Cameron. We had a lot of fun and we learned a lot. It was really neat to see what you guys do almost every day. Well, it was a pleasure taking you guys out. Thanks. <laughs> and I think I'm going to become a lobster fisherman. Oh yeah? I'd be a good one. Okay. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> You're crazy. I had a great time catching all of those lobsters. It sure looked like it, Katie. It was also cool to see that kids just like us could actually catch and sell their own lobsters in a sustainable way. That's right. Don't go too far. When Aqua Kids comes back, we head to the Lobster Pound. Aqua Kids presents another Aqua Kids pop quiz. Here's one that'll get your mouth watering. What was the largest North American lobster ever caught? Was it A, 34 pounds, B, 44 pounds, or C, 46 pounds? Put that bib on and we'll have the answer after the break. We're back with the answer to today's Aqua Kids Pop Quiz. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, the largest recorded North American lobster ever caught weighed 44 pounds, six ounces. Hey Katie, I think we'll need some extra melted butter. Welcome back to Aqua Kids. We're headed back to Maine to the Trenton Bridge Lobster Pound. We're gonna get a look at where the lobsters go once they're caught. Okay, let's head out. When you think of Maine, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Lobster. That's right. <laughs> and today we're here at the Trenton Bridge Lobster Pound in Trenton, Maine. Lobster Pound? Is that anything like a dog pound? Sort of, but not really. Well, let's go check in with Katie and Clark and see what it's all about. Let's go. Well, Selena and Drew, I'm here at the Lobster Pound. Obviously, I have a lobster. <laughs> <laughs> Warren, what goes on here? Well, what we do is uh, we sell the lobsters here retail to the general public. You come in at a lobster pound, you buy your lobster by the pound. Okay. You can choose the one that you want to eat for dinner <laughs> right off the ice. We weigh it up and cook it for you. Oh, cool. Under a wood-fired cooker out front. Nice. And are lobsters sustainable? They are. They are sustainable due to the fishing practices that the fishermen have. Their traps have vents to release the small lobsters that are not legal. Right. And also, we measure them. We only, we have a slot limit. We only take the, uh, the lobsters of, uh, of legal size. Like right. this one, this one is a female here. Like one of the sustainable practices would be if this lobster was caught, with eggs under the tail, then the fisherman would, would put a notch in the flipper, the flipper right here, this one to the right of center. Okay. They put a V notch here, and this lobster would be would uh, be free and clear for its whole life as uh, brood stock on bottom. Okay, and that means it can keep reproducing. Yeah, it will and basically why you would be not the one with eggs is you would know that it's a fertile female. Right. Yeah. So the presence of eggs is how you tell between male and females or is there other well, things? Well, no, there's there's other things too. I, let me get a male for you. I can show you the difference. Wow, that's a big lobster. Yeah, yeah. This, this is a male. To show you some differences, yeah. you can see the difference in the claws. Okay, wow, it's a the lot bigger. Well, the female of similar size has a narrower, more, Tapered more sh in. a sharper claw, okay. where the male is a big blunt claw. That, see how thick it is. Are they used for fighting or territorial display? Well, it 
it's mostly just because the male has a doesn't need to carry the eggs. See, their tail is narrower. If you yeah. roll that over, you can see the shell here is different. Oh yeah. Because that the the male doesn't have eggs yeah. ever. Yeah. So, and also to tell on the smaller lobsters, it's not so noticeable between the two. Uh, you can tell here that. These are points and they're sharp. Okay. The last two two flippers. And, these and are on the thin. on the female they're flat oh, thin. I see, yeah. see the Oh yeah. So that would be the that would be the difference. It's very noticeable here because of the claws as they get bigger uh, are more pronounced on the male than the female and the tail as they get bigger is smaller on the male opposed to the female. Yeah, it's a lot wider here. Yeah. How are lobster populations doing in the wild? Uh, very good. Uh, right now, each season, we're having banner years. Wow. Uh, record catches, and the fishermen are seeing a huge population of undersized lobster still coming up through to show that we should have we should have many more good years to come. So it sounds like the sustainable practices they're putting into uh, implementation is really helping the fisheries. And it sounds like we'll have lobster for, for many years to come. Exactly, for sure. So you mentioned that one of the sustainable practices is measuring the carapace size. How do you do that? Well, we have a tool, I'll show you. Well, look at that. In, if, if it was a small lobster, you would measure the carapace three and a quarter inches from, you measure from the eye socket, and the, if the shell would have to be longer than this measurement. Okay. If it was a large one like this, you would measure from the eye socket to the back of the shell. Right. As you can see, that one there is just barely of legal size to take. If he was to shed his shell this season one more time, he would have been free and clear from being taken. What happens if a lobster loses a claw, like this one? Well, they have the ability to regenerate the oh, claw, well. as you can see there. Yeah, there's a little one growing back. That's amazing. And then this one was at that state, and now after shedding maybe two different times in the molting process, his claws are somewhat getting bigger. Mine too. How many times did this one have said? Uh, maybe three times. Wow. It, but they never do catch up with their full body okay. size. They'll be a little bit smaller. Than yeah. Normal. Like that one, look. Thank you so much. We had a lot of fun playing with the <laughs> little lobsters. Yeah. And we learned a lot. Yeah, and also, this, this measurement is pretty much the market size. You know, anything smaller than a pound really isn't, isn't a meal. And anything bigger than this is... That's for 10 people. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's more than a meal for sure. Right. So now that we know all about lobster, how do you cook these guys? Well, we boil them in seawater under sea wood water. fire cookers. Why seawater? Well, seawater adds a little flavor. We've been doing it the same way since 1956. <laughs> That's oh, wow. so long. How long do you cook them for? Uh, we cook them anywhere from 15 to 25 minutes, depending on the size. We get them in here boiling right now. As you can see, I'll show you in here. But... Oh, nice and red. Oh, that's, wow. what, that's what the end result is. <laughs> it's great to hear that the sustainable practices lobster fishermen are using allow lobster populations to continue to grow and thrive. Very true. Don't go away. Aqua Kids will be right back. Glad you stuck around. We're headed back to the Trenton Bridge Lobster Pound to get a lesson on eating lobster. Apparently, Apparently it's, it's dinner, dinner time. time. <laughs> Here we go, guys. Um, yum. yum. Food. Yeah. Some bibs there you might want to get started with first. <laughs> that might help. Oh, look at these. <laughs> How do I look? Oh, I'm just going to leave it like that. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, first everyone want to grab a butter. There you go, it's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, we have no idea how to do this. So. <laughs> All right, well, I'll, 
I'll show you how it's done here. First, you want to start with the claws, because the claws are going to cool off the quickest. Mm -hmm. You break one right from the body it's like right this. It is broke. Should we? Yeah, sure. Uh, Grab a lobster. Yeah. Well, that mine. one's mine. Oh, I'm just stole your lobster. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> okay. That's there we go. Nice try, Drew. Yeah. Sorry. All right, now we'll start with the claw. Oh. What you want to do is crack it just behind where the thumb even attaches, that. like this. Oh, well, I did that wrong. That's oh, okay. okay. I still got it. Yeah. All right, well, this oh. guy was just out, so it's cracking easy. Come on. Yeah. And you just. And then you have. Her. Then a whole piece of claw meat will come out just oh, like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Without the cartilage in there because we took yeah. it out I'm gonna do things on the thumb bad, portion. Yeah. Now we'll start with the with the tail section. All right. Just twist the tail right off from the body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Something came out of mine. <laughs> oh. That's a liver. They call that tamale. Some people actually like it. It's a delicacy to some. Huh. Then once you've got the tail off, just take your, your fingers and break the flippers off the back of the tail. What? I did it. Are you kidding me? There we go. Oh. My bad. Mm. Careful, there's a little space. And you, can, and you can use your thumb to push the meat out, out through the top of the tail, or for me, what I oh, like there we go. All right, how did What you I like that? to do, just so I don't mash up the meat in the end of the tail, is I take the tail and squeeze it like this. And it breaks, it breaks the inside of the tail where the flippers are. Okay. Then if you flip it over in your hand, like this, oh, that's fun. You can break the shell right off because, on, oh. like on a hard shell, the tail will be so full of meat that sometimes it's really hard to to push the meat out of the tail. So now, now we're at this point. We've got the meat out of the tail. What we're going to want to do now is take the sand vein out and that all you have to do is simply just peel the top of the tail back careful not to to break that then you just you peel the sand vein right out of there and it's ready to eat all right well we've just learned how to get all the meat out of a lobster and now it's time to eat it but before we started, we just wanted to thank everyone here at Trenton Bridge Lobster Pound. It was a great day. We oh, learned a welcome. lot, had a lot of fun. Now we get to have a good meal. Excellent. <laughs> We're glad you stopped by. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Apex predators, the guardians of our ecosystem, are vanishing. Patrolling the world's oceans since before the dinosaurs, sharks come in over 400 different species. They range in size from only 8 inches to nearly 50 feet. These animals have extremely sharp senses yet grow and breed slowly, producing very few young. Hollywood has given sharks a bad reputation, but only about six fatal shark attacks are recorded each year. Sharks go after the sick, dead, and injured animals, keeping prey populations healthy and in check. They are part of nature's cleanup crew. It is estimated that 100 million sharks are killed each year, many from bad fishing practices like longlining or trawling, but most are killed for their fins to make shark fin soup, an expensive, trendy food. Find out ways you can help sharks and other apex predators on our website. Here's our top story. International Council certifies Maine lobster as sustainable. Great news for Maine's lobster fishermen. After more than five years of trying to become certified, the International Marine Stewardship Council has finally named Maine's lobster industry as sustainable. A Marine Stewardship Council certification is big news for the state, where the certification means that Maine's lobster industry meets all the major international standards on sustainable fishing, ecosystem protection, and eco-labeling. Maine is now part of just over 100 fisheries worldwide that have received this prestigious certification. Governor Paul LePage is especially thrilled about the certification and hopes that it will bring lots of revenue into the state. In a statement made regarding the certification, LePage said, This certification recognizes our long-standing practices of good stewardship and ensures that every lobster caught in Maine waters can be marketed not only as delicious, healthy food, but also as a resource that meets the most stringent international environmental standards for seafood sustainability. Congratulations to the state of Maine and its lobster fisheries for this exciting news. I'm Katie with Aqua News, keeping you connected to our planet.
Now back to Aqua Kids. Unfortunately, we're out of time for today's show, but I had a great time learning about Maine's lobster. Me too. From catching them on our own to learning how to cook them, it was cool to see what kind of work goes into getting a lobster onto our dinner plates. I really enjoyed learning how the sustainable practices lobster fishermen are using allow lobster populations to continue to grow. That's right, Drew. Cameron, Connor, and Warren reminded me that everyone can do their part to keep our planet green and blue. And so can you. So visit our website to follow us on our journey. And learn how you can come along with us. And together we can help keep the world and the water a great place to play and explore. And we'll see you next time on, on Aqua Kids. Kids.